<laughs> That's awesome. I kicked him in the groin and he said I have too many young already. Are you kidding me again? We even kicked him in the nuts that time. War. War never changes. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted. The earth was nearly wiped clean of life. A great cleansing. An atomic spark struck by human hands. Are you good? If not, let's get good. It's Saturday night, and that means I am playing Fallout 2. This is a brand new series for me, and I'm really excited because I love the Bethesda Fallout games, but I've never actually played through these older ones. So I have a build here that I've been sort of messing around with, and I think this is the one I want to go with. We have a Strength of 5, a Perception of 8, an Endurance of 5, a Charisma of 5, an Intelligence of 8, an Agility of 8, and a luck of eight. I'm not entirely sure how good this build is, but this is the best I could come up with. We're also taking the gifted trait and the fast shot trait, and we have tagged small guns, first aid, and speech. So let's begin. Come in, chosen one. There are things you must know. The village is dying. The signs are everywhere. Withering crops. That crop looks like a heart. Albino Brahmin. Sick children. You? There is hope, however. A slim hope. That few know of. The old discs speak of an item called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It is said it can bring life to the wasteland. That is the prize, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we are after. We are seeking a Gek to try to save our people. This will be your quest, if you prove yourself worthy. For that proof, you must first journey to the Temple of Trials. If you survive, come back to me. We will talk more. Our life is in your hands, Chosen One. Prove yourself. Find the Gek. Be our salvation. Okay, so we are in the game, and we are standing in front of the Temple of Trials. As you can see, Olmec is waiting up there to give us our prize when we finish. And now we're going to head in. So this is an interesting little bit where this game differs greatly from Bethesda's Fallout's. In Bethesda's Fallouts, if I ran into these two ants, I would just beat them to death with my bare fists. And the reason I could do that is because in Bethesda's Fallout games, everything is leveled to where you're at. That way you never end up in a situation where you just can't compete at all. And that's a good game design philosophy, but these older Fallouts don't adhere to that. Which is why for the most part in this temple, we're going to be avoiding combat as much as possible and basically trying to use our high agility to run past enemies. This should work pretty well. I mean, we may get tagged a couple of times here trying to get some loot, but that's okay. Oh, that sucks. We actually had to walk to get that, so that means we're not going to be able to move as far. I think what I'm going to do is move this way. We might get hit. Yeah, we got hit. And then I'm going to end my turn here. And he missed. Awesome. The reason I think he missed is because if you don't spend all your action points and you end your turn, it adds the excess action points to your armor class to avoid being hit. Which is kind of awesome. But it doesn't really matter now because once we get clear of them, they can't catch me. Well, they can if I run out of places to run, but that's not going to happen right now. Okay, so in this room, I don't really see anything except for that scorpion right there. So I'm not going to even try to go in there. I'm just going to move forward. We really don't want to tangle with a scorpion. We will get our butts kicked. Uh, this room's got scorpions and a corpse. Not worth it. I'm going to stay away from the scorpions. Scorpion's bad. Unless there's an easy way to sort of 
get to the loot, which there isn't here. Like here, we're in this narrow hallway with scorpions. Not a good plan. Oh, that's right. This one, I believe, is locked. I've played through the temple a couple of times in planning runs to sort of get ready for this. Uh, but I haven't played much further than that. I think the farthest I made it was into the first town where I stole someone's beef jerky and was brutally murdered for it. A guy literally smashed my skull with a sledgehammer because I stole beef jerky. Yeah, that's a big difference. You know, these games from Black Isle are much less forgiving than the Bethesda Fallout games are. You know, you're not going to be able to leave and come back three days later. You're not going to make it out of town alive if you do something bad. So right here, I'm just repeatedly trying to disarm these traps. As you can see, you get 25 experience when you do succeed in disarming them, so that's why I'm doing this. Or I'll probably just cut through this section right here because this is going to take quite a bit. Okay, so I've finally disarmed all of the traps after like 50 failed attempts at each one. So we've got one ant in here. I think we can rush to this chest without getting tagged too. Oh, that's a scorpion. That's a scorpion. Forget it. We're oh! Oh god. We are already too far in. Whatever, we're gonna get it. We are too far in, and now we just need to make sure we stay safe. And to do that, I'm just gonna try to move out of range of everything so that we can then run. There we go, that's what we needed. And we're not gonna get tagged. Awesome. Run, little man, run. Dude, pick up the spear. Come on, you can do this. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Pick up the spear, pick up the spear. Awesome. Now run. Run, run, run. Get behind that wall and start ending combat. Yes, we got out of combat. Awesome. So now I'm gonna sneak so we can come on over here and grab what's in this without starting a fight with these ants. Oh, I remember this. This is the, the C4 part. Okay, so we need that C4 to blow our way through the next door. There's also some items up here. There's an ant guarding it. Uh, I may just rush after it anyway, because if we're lucky, then we can pull some of these ants right here into that area so we won't have to contend with them because I know there's a couple over here. Yeah, see, there we go. There's two right there. And we're just going to lead them down this hallway where we're going to recover the item and then run away. I think we're close enough for these guys to move now. I really hope we are because what I don't want them to do is move later when I get over by this chest. I want them sort of coming away from the chest right now. There we go. Now I should be able to get the chest and have enough breathing room to run away after. Or maybe not. We'll see. Oof, that's going to be close. Anti-venom? I think that's anti-venom. Run, run, as fast as you can. Can't catch me, I'm the tribal man. Oh, I got bit. Or I got bit at in mist. Woot, run, 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 run. Don't stay and fight, run away. This is not Bethesda's Fallout, this is Obsidian's Fallout. It is punishing, and if I try to fight these guys, I will die. So I'm not even going to bother, I'm just going to get as far away from them as I can. And then I'm going to come over here and lay down this C4. I made the mistake of putting this down with 10 seconds and blowing myself up before. I'm not going to make that mistake this time. I'm going to put 20 seconds on it and get very far away. And then run back and forth to cause it to trigger. Or does it actually trigger on time? I thought it triggered on your movement. Interesting. Either way, it should have popped by now, right? There we go. Oh, I actually jumped there because I was just about to go back and see if I'd done something wrong. Okay, so here is our next screen. I saw movement. I see scorpions and a chest. Not worth it. Uh, over here, it looks like we've got two giant ants. And I'm wondering if we can be sneaky and just sort of... Nope, not gonna happen. Okay. I'm gonna run up here and then wait. What I want to happen is I want the giant ant to walk towards me. And then once he's in range, I'm gonna try to kick him in the face. Over and over again. Oh, I can't do it from there. 
I can do it if I move down one though, right? Yeah. Oh, I missed. I missed. I didn't want to miss. Land the kick. Yes. Killed him. We kicked him to death. Nope, and here comes the next ant. Alright, we got one shot at this. Kick him to death. Yes, we got two of them. Took two of them down. Can you loot them? I don't think I can loot them. No, I can't loot them. Okay, so through this door should be the final fight to leave the Temple of Trials. But before we're ready for that fight, we kind of need to heal up. So I'm going to keep using first aid on myself until I get my health to a reasonable point. Uh, that is five health right there. Very nice. And again... I'm not even sure how the timer on this works, but basically I know you can use it too much and then not be able to use it for a while. I am not entirely sure what resets that, though. Okay, so we'll open that up. And here we go. Straight through so we can talk to Mongoloid. No, his name's not Mongoloid, but that's what I'm calling him. Uh, greetings, good. I have the honor of being your final challenge. To continue in your quest, you must defeat me in unarmed combat. Shall we begin? Sure, let's party. Very well, shall we begin? Did I not just say let's party? Excellent, your equipment will be kept in the trunk outside of the room. You can get it after the fight. Let the fight begin. Good luck to you, good. We don't need luck. We fight dirty. I mean that, too. We are going to kick him square in the nuts. That'll be in a little bit, though, because what I'm going to do in the beginning is try to keep our AC really high so that he can't land anything. Nice, kicked him in the face. Alright, AC's on 13. He still landed a punch, but it wasn't a very heavy one. Ouch, 5 damage total. That's pretty good on his part. Whiff, and AC. Good miss. Ay ay ay, he's just tearing me up with those punches. I don't want to die here. No! No, don't let me die here. This is going to be garbage if I die right here. I did not save. Uh, actually, we're going to go ahead and save. Can't save. Of course I can't save. Why would I be able to save when I really need to save? Oh, no. 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 Stop landing. Darn it. Okay, keep the AC up. Whiff. Whiff. Oh, and land. No, land the kick. Land the kick. Stop whiffing. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. Wow, that was garbage. Okay, so we are dead. Well, that was a good first attempt, wasn't it? Come on. This is... This is... Right here. This is exactly what I mean by the difference between an Obsidian Fallout game and a Bethesda Fallout game. I am getting the tar kicked out of me, and we haven't even essentially left the tutorial yet. This is hard, man. This is really, truly hard. Nice. We landed a kick. We landed two kicks. Oh, wow. We've got a chance here. If we land another kick, we might... Oh, did we just end it? No, we didn't, but we're close. We're close. Ah, whiff. Okay, fine. No, wait. <laughs> That was awesome. I ended my turn and he's like, you've defeated me and ran away. <laughs> that's right. That's how much of a boss we are. He ran in fear after kicking our rear ends multiple times. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. He beat me down and in the end, I won. Unfortunately, I did not get to kick him in the balls before he ran away. But we have completed the cave of, or the Temple of Trials. And now, the Holy Vault Suit. So, backstory to this this is the Vault Suit that the Vault Dweller, the main character from Fallout 1, wore. In Fallout 1, he was a person living in Vault 13 who needed to go find a water chip to save them. And he was then exiled at the end of that. So, this is, you're his descendant. This whole village is his descendants. And that right there is the Holy Vault Suit. Okay, guys, that's it for this episode. Uh, it's been frustrating, hilarious, and fun. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and please game responsibly.